When I'm doing chantelevé, I find it really makes a lot of sense to do a batch of pieces rather than one piece. Um, because the etching process is quite complicated and to take one piece through that process just wouldn't make any sense. So the first thing that I do is I scribe out the shapes that I'm interested in using on a flat sheet of copper. Uh, sometimes the shapes are made out of cardboard if they're very simple, but more often they're made out of 100% rag vellum, uh, which I can then uh, moisten and, uh, and it sticks to the copper really well and allows me to make a perfect uh, copy of it. 100% rag vellum can be wet over and over and over again without losing its shape, so it's a very useful tool for me. After I've scribed all the shapes onto the piece of copper, I then outline them with a black marker so that I can see more clearly uh, when I'm doing the sawing. Um, the reason I don't use black marker alone is that the black marker often gets smudged uh, in the process of uh, sawing, so I have the scribe lines there uh, that are the, the perfect lines that I really want to follow. I also use the scribe lines later when I'm sanding the pieces and uh, filing the edges to make sure that the shape is exactly the way I want it. After all the shapes are cut out, I usually do some finishing. I use uh, sometimes power tools for the simpler shapes, and I use files uh, for the more complex shapes and to get into the small areas where the uh, sanding tool can't reach. So this is a typical uh, number of pieces that I would put in an etch vat. Uh, there's seven uh, separate pieces here. Uh, now that the shapes are refined, I start to apply the etch resist. The resist that I use is a mixture of asphaltum, beeswax, and rosin. Uh, the asphaltum um, resists the acid. The rosin uh, adheres uh, it very well to the metal, and the beeswax keeps it from getting brittle over the long um, etching process that I use. Um, and this uh, uh, resist is, is a quite, um, uh, it's like a pudding-like consistency. So it's not really very easy to get detail. So when I'm painting the first coat of etch resist, it's still somewhat rough. And as I'm painting the first coat, I sometimes change the design slightly from uh, from the template and uh, sometimes I add elements that I hadn't added to, to previous pieces. And if I have a complex geometric shape, I usually um, make a little template like this. This is a little sort of a rubber stamp which I have cut out of uh, roofing rubber uh, based on a geometric design that I laid out you know, with proper tools. It would take too long to lay out these geometric designs uh, each and every time I use them so I find a template for this is quite useful as well. So I paint a little bit of resist on it and uh, press it onto the copper piece and that gives me an outline uh, that I can then paint uh, more carefully and more thickly with, uh, with the uh, resist mixture. So after the first day, this is about eight to ten hours, at this point I have seven pieces that are roughly painted with resist. At the beginning of the second day, I examine the pieces and look for where they need to be cleaned up. I use a scribe again and I refine all of the uh, resist lines so that they're really nice and clean because anything that's uh, on the piece will etch into it so I have to make sure they're perfectly clean. Um, after I have them cleaned, I, have, I put a piece of tape on the back which resists uh, the acid for the back of the piece and then I paint a second coat uh, because the first coat is never uh, a completely covering coat there's often little pinholes in it that are invisible to the naked eye so I find that the best practice is to simply put a second coat over the whole thing uh, to make sure that every sort of area of copper is completely covered 
I also do the edges of the piece. The edges of the piece are quite vulnerable. Um, so I, I actually usually give them two coats. So here when I do the top coat, I coat the edges. And then when I coat the back of the tape, which I do with a diluted uh, asphalt and mixture, I coat the edges a second time so that they're very strong. At noon on the third day, I set up the etch vat. I place the pieces all around in a circle like this. Uh, what's going to happen over the next 24 hours is I will check the pieces after two hours. I will give them a quarter turn. I will check them after four hours and then give them another quarter turn. After six hours, another quarter turn, and then overnight so that they'll be ready in the morning. Uh, the uh, acid that I use is ferric chloride. Uh, it needs to be agitated because it's heavier than water. That's uh, the reason I turn the pieces also, uh, because there's currents uh, set up with the air hose that I use, and turning the pieces ensures an even etch. Uh, so I put in one part of ferric chloride and four parts of water. So it is a fairly weak solution, and that's why it takes so long. Um, but uh, the cleanness of the lines that I get um, is worth it for me. So after two hours, I have to do a special uh, kind of check because there's usually little spots where rosin has adhered to the metal and those have to be scratched off with a scribe uh, to make sure that they etch smoothly. So 8 o'clock the next morning is when the etch vat is ready and uh, this is what it looks like. You can tell the acid has gone green and there's kind of foam on the top which means it's really lost all its strength by now. And here's all the pieces after they've just come out. You can see the background here is very, very smooth and very even. And I wanted the evenness, but now I want to put texture on the pieces. So what I do is I use these little plastic pins to, uh, to um, pin the pieces onto a slab of styrofoam so that I can uh, do a further etching process, which will give them a nice textured background, which will uh, really enhance the enamel. Uh, once it's uh, fired onto them. So I put a very small bit of ferric chloride, just enough to cover the bottom of this shallow dish, and then I turn the uh, foam with all the pieces on it upside down into that so that the surfaces are in contact with, uh, with full strength ferric chloride. I need to kind of pull the edges of the foam as I'm doing here. Uh, constantly uh, for the 20 minutes that this is going on in order to make sure that there's no bubbles trapped under there. So then I remove the um, tape from the back of the pieces and I immerse them in uh, an ammonia solution. The ammonia uh, removes the resist. The uh, resist obviously has been very carefully um, uh, strongly adhered to the metal so it takes uh, a lot to pull it off. The ammonia lifts the resist right off and now here this is uh, the middle of the fourth day I have some pieces that are ready for etching. You can see that they have nice clean lines and a lovely textured background which will really reflect the enamel once I begin to apply it.